Hey everyone, Tracy here, and today I wanted to share with you uh, a fun technique, uh, just a, a way that I work with acrylic inks to create some very loose, expressive drawings. Um, they don't always work out, but it's a fabulous way to warm up and to just get yourself in the zone of creative flow without worrying too much about detail. Um, I use a continuous line to create these, uh, just a couple of tools. I use uh, the Dale Arani Payne's Gray Acrylic Ink. I have a bamboo skewer handy, which is how I get a lot of these beautiful loose lines that I don't really have control of. Um, and then I have a, a wide flat brush that I use to kind of loosen up some of the ink, get a little bit of tone in there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes uh, with this one, I added just a little tiny bit of white gel pen in because um, his face is pretty wonky, um, the little kitty's face, but um, I had lost a lot of the light. So I just put a little bit of light back in. Occasionally I'll bring a little bit of watercolor pencil in black, but we'll see what happens. But a lot of people have been commenting on these um, drawings and especially on the fact that they are so loose um, and um, just the mark making and all of that. So I thought it'd be fun to just show you how I actually um, do this kind of thing. So this is a photo of our beautiful Bella who we had for 19 years and she passed away several years ago um, and it's just the most she was the most gorgeous cat um, so affectionate and loving and just you know would just stare into your eyes and um, I took this photo she actually I felt like she posed for me um, I took several photos of her and she was you know in one of them she was looking up at the sky and this one she was looking over towards me um, so I thought I'd give this one a go. It's a little bit more detailed than some of the other one, photos I've been working with, but I'm just going to try not to get caught up in the detail um, and I'm going to see what happens. Obviously with this type of a sketch, I'm not looking for any likeness. In fact, the quirkier they turn out, the better. I really enjoy, um, you know, just kind of character filled um, kitties and just you know letting the line do what it wants to do and not getting too precious about it. So um, that's what I'm going to be working with today and I'm going to let's see I might just pop it over here and then work since we're in a square format I might just work just on this part of the paper here. Um, I've got the paper taped down just for ease um, but I just want you to be able to see the reference image if you want to give this a go. So let's work into this area here. Um, and I might even give myself, let's see if I give myself a pencil line, but maybe I don't need that. Um, give myself a rough border here. Okay. This gives me something to work with. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab my Payne's Gray ink. The De La Rani acrylic inks uh, have a dropper, which is fabulous. Um, I'm going to uh, be releasing a new class soon called Introduction to Acrylic Inks. And in that, I will be sharing with you everything I know about them, all of the ways that I use them, all of the beautiful colors that there are. Um, and the ways that I use them with other mixed media. So keep an eye out for that because that's coming very soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, but for this one, I'm just using the one color, Payne's Gray, which I use mostly instead of uh, black. And I'm going to be using the dropper to draw with. Always give your inks a really good shake because the um, pigment does settle to the bottom. If, especially if they've been sitting around for a long time, sometimes even just leaving them upside down like this for a while um, is handy as well. So I'll be drawing a little bit with the dropper and then going into it with my bamboo skewer and my brush. Let's just see how we go. As I said, I'm going to start off with a continuous line and try and keep that because I find that doing a continuous line actually helps uh, to, um, to stay loose. So I'm just thinking about where to start here. And I think I might start with this pot. I 
I'm not actually uh, pushing anything out of the dropper. Um, you'll get yourself in trouble if you do that because um, the ink will come out and blob. So I'm just letting the, the dropper just ease along the page and letting as much ink come out as wants to. I'm going to take some artistic license here and when I do start to run out of ink that's when I will pop it into the um, into the bottle and grab some more ink. Just letting my eye move around and just putting in not everything but just some of the things as I see them. Maybe I'll take some artistic license and add some flowers in. Once you do start running out of ink, that's when it will be time to add, um, <clears throat> to pop the dropper back into the bottle and grab some more. So take most of the ink out. Oops. A little bit dripping from underneath, but that's okay.
Now I want to actually give myself some time to work with this ink while it's still wet. So I'm going to stop with the drawing there and I'm going to just use some water to move some things around. I'm not going to get hung up on the fact that a big drop of ink blobbed on her face or anything like that. It just becomes whatever it's meant to be. I'm going to take the large brush first and I'm just going to make some marks in the background, just move this ink around a little bit. Always have a paper towel handy. Just use the side of the brush to make some different marks, describe some different foliage, trees. We can always add marks in on top as well. There's some dark over here, so we'll pop that in. So we do want to get a sense of some light coming through somehow. I'm going to stick with a wide brush as long as I can. Um, that will allow me to, to continue to be free with my marks. I'm just looking for the darks right now as I see them. Remember to take the water off your brush. I just got a little bit too vigorous there, um, but I can also lift back.
You always want to remember to leave some white space. And then I'm going to come in with my bamboo skewer and just to get a little bit of variation, some of the little stripes in these cactus. Just pulling the wet ink from one place to another. And we'll get a few little suggestions, rocks in here, pebbles. It doesn't have to be everything again, it just has to be a suggestion. Okay. So we can also take a small brush and lift some of the wet ink again and pop in some trunks and some branches. And just look around and see where else we might add some details. Just want a variety of different marks and thicknesses of line. And I'm going to look again at these shadows where I've missed things out or where I've perhaps um, not put things in exactly the right place and so I might need to actually add something else in. So maybe this one needs some more cactus to fill this space in so that the composition works a little better. Just adding in those little details without getting too crazy about the accuracy, I guess. Pop another couple of flowers in up here.
And now I'm just going to like stand back or sit back for a moment and just assess a little bit, right? Because we want it to not be too crazy. Um, I do want to get just a little bit of the fur on Bella, um, a little bit more contrast between the light and the dark. So I'm going to just take a little bit of white ink and pop that onto her chest here and then a little bit through some of these areas here. Now if that white mixes with the paints gray, it is going to be gray. And so you can see there where that's happening. I'm just looking for a little bit of texture and perhaps maybe a little bit along the edges here. And I guess I have to be careful because it's still fairly wet. And so it actually may not work very well. And this may be something that you could do later on uh, but let's just play with it for a moment because I can always fix things. could also come into these with a little bit of gel pen later. Um, I'm not going to go to that extent because again, you know, we're looking for this free, um, beautiful free expression. And I think we are achieving. Take a little bit more of the white and add it into here. And just try different things, you know, just try different kind of ways to move your brush to, you know, try for effects. So I'm just going to dab at this area and see what happens when I do that, whether I can get more of that kind of textural effect that I'm after. I kind of like her fuzziness. So I've just let it dry for just a little bit. Um, and what I want to do now is just add in a tiny touch of black watercolor pencil and a little bit of white gel pen with a Uniball Signo gel pen. Um, and I just want to just do a little tiny bit of work on the eyes because she has those beautiful round eyes. Oops, and the pencil breaks.
And again, if you add something in in one place, just be sure to add it in another. A little bit tricky working with a, <laughs> with a broken watercolor pencil, but... Just so that it doesn't, um, here, let's do this. Just so that it doesn't look completely out of place. You know, we don't want her to look like she's completely different than anything else. So I'm just gonna add it in a few spots. So it makes sense within the whole of the piece. I'm going to take the white gel pen, do the same thing, just add a little bit of line work, a little bit of light. Again, try and keep it as loose as I can. Try not to tighten up right at this, this point in the drawing. of the gel pen and a few other places.
If you want to soften that line up anywhere with the white gel pen, you have a little bit of time to actually come in and just move it around, soften it up before it actually dries permanent in the end. I'm just going to do one last little line just on her eye. I just want to fix that up. This is just a black hole bean pencil um, and I grabbed it because it's right next to me. <laughs> so sometimes it's like whatever I have at hand is what I will use and I'm pretty happy with her cute little face. So, And I think I'm really happy to just leave this one now. And I hope that you've enjoyed watching this little video. Um, I hope you'll have a go at your own loose, expressive, inky sketch um, using one of your photos. And um, I'd love to, I'd love to see it. You can share it with me over on Facebook. You could come and have a look at my Patreon with a seven day free trial. Um, the link for those are down below. And I would love to help you grow your own creative journey. And I have lots of classes on my website, tracyvidugo.com, that can help you with that. Um, and again, I'm really looking forward to this new course coming up, uh, Jump Into Acrylic Inks. Um, where I'm going to share with you all of my favorite ways to work with this beautiful, beautiful medium. <laughs>